Today, 5 minutes your MP must watch. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to the latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. On the 12th of December, the Senate held a hearing relating to the restriction of cash bill. This is the one to do with the $10,000 limit and the removal of our civil liberties with regard to using cash. Now it's important that our MPs understand the full implications of this bill and indeed the narrow basis on which the bill has been founded. And to that end, the CC has created a compilation of the best bits of the hearings. It's only five minutes long and I'm going to play it now. But the purpose of my making this show is not only for you to watch it, but to ask you specifically to reach for your MP and senators and to tell them that they must take five minutes out to watch this show. What is the evidence of the need for Scott Morrison's $10,000 cash ban? The Morrison government claims its currency restrictions on the use of cash bill is necessary to combat tax evasion and money laundering in the black economy. On the 12th of December, the Senate Economics Legislation Committee held a public hearing in Canberra. Labor Senator Alex Gallagher and Centre Alliance Senator Rex Patrick tried to find out if there was any actual evidence for this. The Small Business Ombudsman didn't see the evidence. So is there, any, is there any evidence that people are using these cash payments to avoid GST payments? And this is exactly as I said in the opening statement, we have not seen that evidence. The Australian Taxpayers Alliance didn't know of any evidence. The example earlier was that, you know, there's probably not a great incentive for a a business that's buying some farm machinery or whatever for cash to avoid the GST because they have input and output credits and you need to balance them together to get the true benefit. So yep. is there any evidence that that's not working or people are stepping right outside that? I don't think so. I don't think there's evidence that um, just because of cash people, there are evading taxes and evading GST. That's what like audits are for, and there are laws in place to avoid this kind of thing. Uh, businesses do have to report large transaction, large cash transactions, and so with something like $10,000, they aren't gonna be cheating on their taxes, and if they are, they'll get caught. The Reserve Bank of Australia couldn't provide any evidence. And is there any evidence as to the size of the black economy? I mean, this store of wealth, I mean, how much of that store of wealth would be from the task force's view, black market activity. I think it's probably better you ask Treasury and uh, or, or the, uh, the the task oh, force. Oh, you raised the, yeah. the task yeah. force, so yeah. I thought you might have had some view on that. Austrac, the agency that monitors transactions over ten thousand dollars, had no idea. I pay eleven thousand dollars in cash now, and it's completely legal, no problem. After the enaction of this bill, that will have to be if it's to an ABN holder. That'll have to be done electronically, or it will be illegal. Is that right? It's my. That's my understanding. Senator. Okay. So, how many more transactions are you going to see? Has anybody done the snapshot of that? That would be a question I would have to take on notice. Senator. Well, perhaps if you could, because if you do 2.6 million, we want to know what is the size of this problem you're trying to solve. Mm. In terms of the size of the problem, I think that's a question best directed to, to Treasury. But you're going to count them. The Australian Taxation Office couldn't tell Senator Patrick the purpose of the bill. But in, but in some respect, and, and uh, you know, we're trying to deal with the black economy, which inherently, I presume, means collection of greater taxes for consolidated revenue. Or is the purpose of the bill, in your view, to, uh, as was suggested by the Uniting Church, to uh, basically make life more difficult for uh, people who are um, you know, you know, attempting to money launder or so forth, or is the purpose to gain additional revenue? 
Well, I, I, I defer to my Treasury colleagues about the purpose for the bill, uh, Senator. So what evidence did the Black Economy Division of Treasury provide? The Black Economy was basically, and a lot of the recommendations from that came from evidence from which Michael Andrew and his secretariat found while going and speaking to the communities, uh, business organisations and other, other public sector agencies. And what that found was that there was a growing frustration from businesses that other businesses were using tax or cash discounts to cut them out. So it was a competition issue. So for Michael, it was a fairness issue. I just want to go to this business of um, competition. So, so you are saying that there have been submissions to the task force from employers saying that um, people using cash were undercutting them. I mean, do we know how many submissions? Do we know the, the level of that or is it? So the task force did um, community halls, community meetings, and that's where a majority of these came okay. from. So there's no sort of uh, statistical data? It's, it's anecdotal, is it? Um, it is anecdotal, and I think if you ask most people if they've been offered a lower price for cash, they potentially will say yes. When you tell me you do a couple of town halls and people complain about cash payments, I can understand that. But I don't think that's empirical evidence. I think it is. Because well, it's, advice, it? it's advice from one how many business people told you that? In, a, in an environment which they How many people in. told you? Ten? Well, it's a task force. I can't tell you. It's a Twelve? task force before my, before my time. So I'm, I'm, we're looking but for some data. Should radical legislation that jails people for two years for using legal tender in transactions over $10,000 be based on anecdotal evidence? For more information, go to stopthecashban.com.au. The reason this is so important is because there is no foundation in fact or data or intent to support the bill. And our politicians need to understand this before it's too late. So do watch the extract and then when you've got time, reach for your MP, either by phone or email, and recommend that they watch the video too. The link is in the comments below. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>